Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your word. We ask for those who would have ears to hear today. That we would hear your word. And ask that you would give us a, a will and desire. To want to obey your word. Speak to us today, we ask. In, in the name of our sovereign King, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, so uh, for the little ones here, question. How many hours of the day would you say the average person worships? Як ви думаєте, скільки годин на день витрачає людина, щоб прославляти? What do you think? Як ви думаєте? Maybe one hour a day? Може, один день? Один, одна година на день? Ten minutes? Десять хвилин? Maybe ten hours? Може, десять годин? Anybody? Кого є ідеї? Twenty-five. The answer is twenty-four hours in a day. Everyone is always worshiping. Now there's different ways the word worship is used. When we gather as the body of Christ for Sunday worship. This is a public formal worship Це є публічним та формальним прославлінням. And some people when we sing songs to God they call this worship. І дехто може також називати, коли ми співаємо до Бога, це теж прославління. But we always worshiping. Ми завжди прославляємо. In our thoughts, нашими думками, in our feelings, нашими почуттями, and in our choices. Нашим вибором. Now there was this uh, Ukrainian man. His name was Cholovik. Yeah, and he had this black dog, big black dog. And he really loved this dog. And, but the problem was, this dog was very frustrating. It just followed his nose everywhere. He couldn't train him. And he's just always getting in trouble. And creating trouble for the man. The dog really had one simple job. Protect the chickens from the wolf. But every week or so, one or two chickens would go missing. This dog just couldn't catch the wolves. But still, the man treated the dog very well. One day, a small, malnourished, homeless, white dog he was lost and wandered onto their property. And this black dog threw a fit. <laughs> and he was barking and barking all loud at this little dog. And the man thought, oh, there must be a wolf. He came running outside with his shotgun. Found this small white dog. He took the dog and brought him inside. And began nursing the dog back to health. And he came to love this dog. In time, the dog became healthy. And he thought it would, might be time to try to make them friends. But neither dog was having it. They both just did not like each other. And the black dog kept trying to hurt the white dog. So he put the black dog on a chain. 
near the chicken coop. Continued to care for the white dog. And at time he grew up, became stronger. And uh, one day him and the black dog, they had a little scrap. And the white dog gave the black dog a couple good bites. And that black dog learned his place. And in time, the man trained the white dog to protect the chickens from the wolves. And he became very good at it. All of us have a white dog and a black dog. We have evil desires. And if we are Christian, we have godly desires. And these desires are at war. And the question is, which dog is stronger? The question, the answer to the question is, whichever dog you take better care of. Now, remember in Genesis, God commanded mankind to be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. Пам'ятаєте, в Буці Бог дав повеління людям, щоб вони плодилися. Yes. And in time we find when Israel was slaves in Egypt. І через деякий час ми знаємо, що юдеї, вони були, євреї, вони були в рабстві у Єгипті. Very similar language is used. They, they multiplied greatly. А і він там використовував дуже схожу мову, також говорячи, вони розмножалися дуже сильно. So when God came and delivered them from slavery in Egypt, there was like over a million people. Some say up to two million. So God delivers two million people from Egypt. And they're very young in the faith. They're used to the old ways of Egypt. Their black dog is big and strong. Their white dog is small and a newborn. And God leads them through the wilderness to freedom. And just two months later, they come to Mount Sinai. So they are very young in their faith. And God would appear to them on this mountain. And a big black cloud and fire everywhere. And all these people gathered around the mountain. Two million, roughly. And God's voice thundered from the cloud. This is the only time in history something like this has ever happened. Every other time God spoke, it was through one man, a prophet, an apostle. But God here spoke audibly to a multitude. He's never done anything like this since. So this was a very, very important moment in history. And he spoke what is called the Decalogue. Deca, like ten, desit. Log, like logos, word, ten words. Logos, slova, desit, srif. Okay, so... Let us read the first two of these words in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 6. Давайте прочитаємо два із цих десяти слів, тільки два, які знаходяться в вихід 20 розділ з першого по шостий вірші. 
Бог промовляв, і Бог промовляв всі слова оці, кажучи, «Я Господь Бог твій, що вивів тебе з єгипетського краю, з дому рабства. Хай не буде тобі інших богів передо мною. Не роби собі різьби і всякої подоби з того, що на небі вгорі, і що на землі долі, і що в воді під землею. Не вклоняйся їм і не служи їм, бо я Господь, Бог тобі, Бог заздрісний, що карає за провину батьків на сина, на третіх і на четвертих поколіннях тих, хто ненавидить мене, і що чинить милість тисячам поколінь тих, хто любить мене і хто держиться моїх заповідей. Якщо ви пам'ятаєте, минулого разу, коли я говорив з вами про 10 заповідей, ми говорили про три використання закону. І один з використання закону було вести нас до Христа. To show us our sin through the law and lead us to the gospel. But here, God does something interesting. He establishes his credibility, faithfulness. He says, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. Він каже, я є твоїм Богом, який вивів тебе з єгипетського рабства. I rescued you from slavery. Я спас тебе з рабства. So he begins with the gospel. Він починає з Євангелія. And then he goes into the law. І потім він йде до закону. So when we've already been rescued, коли ми вже були спасені, because of the gospel, через Євангелія, because of who God is, через те, ким є Бог, we then seek to fulfill the law. Вже потім ми шукаємо закон. It's not, oh, we had the law and now we have Jesus, we don't need the law. Це не так, що у нас є Євангелія, тому нам не потрібен, у нас є Христос, тому нам не потрібен це. It's like, because we have Jesus, але тому, що в нас є Христос, by grace we seek to obey the law. Через благодать ми хочемо шукати Його закон. And when we fail, і якщо в нас не виходить, there's always grace. So when the Israelites heard this voice from the mountain, they were very fearful. This is a correct response. To fear God, not, not like running away from Him and running off of the side of a cliff, But to be afraid and to hear. And after the ten words, Moses went up the mountain. Does anyone know how long Moses was up there? Forty days. Okay, so, and while he was up there, the Israelites waited very patiently. І коли Моїсей там був на горі, ізраїльтяни дуже терпляче чекали. And actually Joshua went with Moses, but only like halfway up. Joshua пішов з Моїсеєм тільки до половини шляху. So the people were, what were they doing? They were making cookies for Moses and Joshua. Вони дуже були, ізраїльтяни були дуже терпляче, вони випікали печиво для Моїсея і Джошуа. And the ladies were knitting him sweater. І пані робили светер для них. Yeah? Так? No. They said, as for this guy, Moses, who led us out of Egypt, we don't know what he's doing. Aaron, make us a God. And so they brought many earrings, lots of earrings, And Aaron put them in the fire and formed a golden calf. What did the people say about this calf? They said, Behold your pagan fertility God. Your pagan God. Mm-hmm. No. They said, behold, your gods who brought you out of Egypt. 
І ось бога, боги, які вивели нас з єгипетського рабства. And then Aaron said, tomorrow we will have a feast for Jehovah. І потім Арон сказав, що завтра в нас буде пир для Єгови. They called this golden calf Jehovah. Вони назвали цього золотого тетя Єгови. Aaron had completely lost his mind. Арон просто з'їхав з глузд. So, and meanwhile, Moses is up on the mountain. І поки Моїсей там на горі. And he's God is writing with his own finger the decalogue on the stone tablets. І поки Бог своїм пальцем пише 10 слів декалог на скрижалях. And God's giving Moses some additional instructions. І також Бог дає додаткові інструкції Моїсею. Instructions for the construction of the tabernacle. А інструкції щодо того, як побудувати скиню. This was to be God's house. Це мало бути Божим дім. The place where God dwelled among his people. Там, де Бог міг пробувати серед своїх людей. And when Moses came down and witnessed their idolatry, коли Моїсей спустився та побачив їх ідолопоклонство, he was very angry. Він був дуже розлючений. Who else was angry? Хто ще був розлючений? God was angry. Бог був дуже розлючений. Moses was a worshiper of God. Моїсей прославляв Бога. He had like desires. As God had him. В нього були такі ж бажання, як і Бог мав. And he took this calf and he melted it, ground it into powder. Моисей взяв цього тельця, він його поклав в вогонь, перетворив в в порох. And they had the Israelites drink it. І він змусив ізраїльтян випити. And threw the rest in the water. І залишки він викинув в воду. Completely destroyed this idol. Повністю він зруйнував цього ідола. Now, idolatry comes in all kinds of different forms. Uh, ідолопоклонство, uh, воно приходить до нас в різних формах. There are people that build statues. Є люди, які будують статуї. That are actually a channel for literal demonic beings. І самі є якби каналом, через який проходять ці демони. That they worship. Яких вони прославляють. Another kind of idol would be making a picture of God. Інший ідол буде зробити зображення Бога. For the purpose of worship. Для того, щоб це зображення прославляти. There are some Christians who believe the second commandment is means that we can't have any pictures of Jesus. Дехто вірить в те, що друга заповідь говорить про те, що в нас не може бути зображення Христа. No pictures of Jesus anywhere at all. Ніякого зображення Христа Ніде. And another group uh, believes it means that all art is wrong. This was more in the groups in the past. But God said no image of anything on heaven above or the earth below. But this is all actually one sentence, a long sentence. Але це взагалі то одне речення, дуже велике, довге речення. And in the same sentence God says for the purposes of worship. І в тому самому реченні Бог каже для мети, для мети прославління. So it's it doesn't even say pictures of of God. Там навіть написано зображення Бога. It says pictures of anything. Там написано зображення будь-чого. For the purpose of worship. This is idolatry. Now, another kind of idolatry. The kind we're all most familiar with. Is when we love anything or desire something more than God. It comes down to our desires. Our desires motivate us to do what we do. Наші бажання мотивують нас робити те, що ми робимо. So, if if you want to understand what your desires are, just look at what choices you make. Якщо ви хочете зрозуміти, які у вас бажання, подивіться на те, які ви робите вибір. And the reason you make those choices. І чому ви робите цей вибір? What are they in service of? Чому цей вибір служить? Who is your master? Хто є вашим господином? Okay. So we always pursue that which we love. Ми завжди шукаємо того, чого ми любимо. God calls us to live quorum Deo. Бог призиває нас жити перед його обличчям. Right? Like before the face of God. Перед обличчям Божим. And God says, "Have no gods before my face." 
І він каже, не маєте ніякого іншого Бога перед моїм обличчям. All that we do when no one is around should be done for God. Все, що ми робимо, коли ніхто не бачить, має бути перед обличчям Божим. But we all the time we can take good things and make them into a God thing. Але вже ж коли ми робимо щось хороше, ми можемо взяти це хороше і зробити з нього Бога. Usually we're worshiping ourselves in some way. Зазвичай ми прославляємо Якими шляхом ми знаходимо шлях, як прославляти себе? We're seeking our own self-glory, perhaps. Може, прославляємо, ми хочемо прославитися. John Calvin said our hearts are idol factories. John Calvin сказав, що наше серце – це фабрика ідолів. We're like taking care of the black dog. Ми хвилюємось про нашу чорну собаку. And we're pursuing desires that God doesn't desire. І ми бажаємо те, чого не бажає Бог. Right? We're living quorum sapien. Sapien. Живемо перед обличчям людини. We're worried about what people think. Ми дуже піклуємося про те, що ж думають про нас люди. Or the praise of man. Чи як нас похвалять. The approval of some person. Чи як нас приймуть. Or the love of some person. Чи любов інших людей. Or maybe it's a job. Чи може робота. Or maybe you're just super cool. Чи може ви просто супер крутий? And for you, that's your world. І це для вас, це ваш просто світ. You're the coolest guy on the block. Ви найкрутіший хлопець на вулиці. And if you ever, someone ever took away your coolness, or... Якщо хтось забере вас цю критизну, Maybe destroyed your reputation. Це може зруйнувати вашу репутацію. You would just want to die. І ви захочете просто померти. It's not good or bad. It's not bad to love people. Не є поганим любити людей. To have interests. Мати якісь зацікавленості. To have passions. Мати пристрасті. But all these things in life. Але все це в нашому житті. Our tools, our opportunities. Інструменти, можливості. Our plans. Наші плани. They should be in service to God. Вони завжди мають служити Богу. What are your goals? Які у вас є плани? Why do you want those goals? Цілі. Чому ви хочете до десяти цілей? What's your five-year plan? Що ви плануєте робити за п'ять років? Your life plan. Що ви плануєте в своєму житті робити? And how does this fit under the umbrella of God's desires? І як це виглядає під зонтиком Божого бажання? We become like what we worship. Ми стаємо тим, що ми прославляємо. We have affection towards something. В нас є прихильність до чого. And the more our love for that thing grows, і чим більше любов чи пристрасті до цього ростуть, the more we become like it. Більше ми стаємо схожими на це. The more we, the more we know God, чим більше ми знаємо Бога, the more of His beauty we see. Тим більше ми бачимо Його красоти. Like the verse Roman read. Beholding the beauty of the glory of God. У вірші, який прочитав Роман. Beholding the beauty of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Бачення красоти Божої в Христі. We are transformed. Через це ми змінюємо. From one degree of glory to another. З одного прославлення до наступного. And this is... До рівня до наступного рівня. And this is by the Spirit who is the Lord. By beholding God, there's nothing, no other God in front of our view of God. No other God before His face. We see His glory. Коли ми бачимо Його славу, Його красоту, Його могутність. І ми, ми починаємо бачити Його славу. І 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 ми духовно стаємо схожими більше на Його славу. Бог є камінь. Він стабільний. Він стійкий. Як ви вирішуєте в Бога, і поки ви зростаєте в Богі, you become a more stable person. Ви становитеся більш стійким. You literally become less insane. Ви стаєте менше божевільним. You become more faithful. Ви стаєте більш вірним. Because God is faithful. Тому що Бог вірний. This is how he began the Decalogue. Це саме так, як він почав свій Decalogue. I 
brought you out of Egypt. I am faithful. I keep my covenant. We always break our covenant with God. But by grace, the more we feed the white dog, the stronger our godly desires become, God is not inward. He's not in, in like self-obsessed. He is outward. He's a fountain of good. And, and we, as we become more like God, we become a giving people. We become a serving people. We make sacrifices. Love is sacrificial. And Moses, after the Israelites created this gross idolatry, Moses went and got on his face and prayed to God, pleading for mercy. He said, God, take my life. Aaron was acting all about himself and for the people. Moses was willing to sacrifice himself on behalf of the people. So then uh, Moses, after, uh, well, God actually threatened to not dwell among the people in the tabernacle. But after Moses prayed for them, God gave them mercy. And Moses would go outside the camp to his own tent. And as he beheld the glory of God, he was his face was literally transformed. And the people changed. They began to wait for Moses. And they began to worship. Instead of bringing their earrings for the golden calf, instead of investing their wealth in an idol, the Bible says uh, they plundered themselves. The language means like they basically like stole from themselves. And they began bringing things for the building of the tabernacle. For God's house. By God's design. Aaron thought he built a house for God. So we need to build God's house as he wants us to build his house. We need to worship God as He is. He's given us His Word. It's complete. It's sufficient. We don't need to imagine some modern, progressive, new way to do things. These are idols. And they are destructive. So these people now are serving God's house. And they brought like a thousand kilograms of gold. Silver, bronze, fabrics. Because their white dog had now become stronger than the black dog. Відтепер став сильнішим до чорного пса.